back, everybody. This is another episode of the Exodus Project, and I'm joined with my good friend Dan Barwell again from the Noah Hyde World Center. Mm, glad to be here, Steve. Yeah. yeah, always glad to have you on. And tonight we are going to discuss one of one of y'all's questions, one of y'all's suggested topics, and that is how a non-Jew, a Noah Hyde, approaches marriage, divorce, and remarriage. So let's get right into it. So I'm going to lead off. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to pull my my information from the Divine Code, and Dan is going to pull his information from Brit Shalom. So we're actually going to be spearheading with really both the codified works, codified works for um, no, no I high life. Yeah, and both of those works actually are going to be found linked in the description of this video. So go on there and pick yourself up a copy of both. Excellent All right, material. so to be, yeah, definitely. So to begin, we actually find that whilst Noahides are not commanded explicitly to be fruitful and multiply, we are in fact obligated to because we have to settle the world it's a logical obligation right procreation and yeah procreate exactly yeah otherwise where's the where's the population Boy. of the world going so it's nevertheless god's will that every man who is able should marry a woman and have children from her it's it's a pretty simple natural way of things and these citations can be found in Sanhedrin 59b, as well as Yevamot 62a. So, anything you'd like to add on that? Yeah. Well, uh, Rabbi Shirky uh, says here, he says, The sages said anyone who is not occupied with procreation is as though he sheds blood. Think about mm. that. Uh, and as yeah. if he diminishes the image of Hashem. Uh, and anyone who is without a wife is without joy, without blessing, without goodness, without peace, without Torah, and without protection. Uh, and he is not even called a true man. And uh, he says, for it is written, male and female, he created them in order to procreate, and he called their name man. And so you got to understand that uh, marriage is two halves of a single whole. And uh, yeah. Two halves of one single whole, and you've got to keep that in mind. And so, uh, as if, uh, as though he sheds blood, somebody who's not uh, occupied with procreation, uh, and it's as if he diminishes the image of Hashem in some way, shape, or form. If uh, it's not something that you do or consider or live by, are you really adding to uh, society positively? You've got to look at it in that light. I think that's a, a very important point, uh, procreation uh, for sure. But he does clarify that regarding the Noahide obligation to procreate, and he cites the same source um, and uh, a couple others, Sanhedrin 59 uh, B. Um, yeah, he says a woman is not commanded to procreate directly. Um, right. But, you know, I think bottom line is we're here, we're here. This is something that should seem so natural yeah. uh, exactly. and flow so freely that it's not strange or or odd in any way. And uh, uh, it, only the perverse would uh, distort it uh, to something that it shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. And I'll I'll just basically finish that point with an excerpt from... Rabbi Weiner's book, The Divine Code, um, he says the practical difference is that if Gentiles were expressly commanded to procreate, then they would be obligated to do so even if it would cause them discomfort or trouble. But since the obligation stems only from a logical reason, they are only obligated to do so if there is no logical reason not to do so. An individual Gentile is thus exempt if he would experience any serious discomfort, discomfort as a result of fulfilling it. This is written in the responsa of Hatam Sofer Evan Haezer, chapter 20. But since only Jewish men are obligated to the commandment to be fruitful and multiply, therefore a Jewish woman is not obligated to endure pain in order to fulfill this, but she may do so by her choice. The same logic applies to Gentiles. So, 
Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You got to realize that uh, the Noahide code is 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 very very rational and practical. And like we said, this is something that should flow so naturally. Uh, Rabbi Shirky then gets into uh, uh, the concept of love, and uh, he just discusses love between a man and his wife is one of the highest expressions of both human and divine morality. Uh, the essence of the principle uh, to love your fellow as yourself manifests in a married couple. Uh, the most desirable way for facilitating the marriage bond is through a public ceremony, uh, such as by traditional betrothal and sanctification under a chupa or canopy. This bond becomes obligatory and is validated uh, absolutely after consummation of the marriage. He says, point four, a man and a woman who have love between them as well as trust and mutual respect are found favorable and are beloved by the creator. And I think that that's for those that are living in an unmarried uh, ceremony estate. Um, the point being, uh, there's no command specifically uh, to marry, but, um, uh, so if you're cohabitating, uh, like you and I were talking before about the, the, the new laws in Malaysia that prohibit, right. Right. uh, cohabitation before marriage and, uh, uh, sex before marriage in Malaysia is, you know, punishable by, uh, imprisonment. And, um, yeah, the point is, uh, as a Noahide, you could be considered, married if you are with uh in a loving bond uh with with uh another uh, uh person of the opposite sex and are publicly known to be living with them i mean we consider it uh uh, uh what do you call it uh, uh uh common law right common law yeah. marriage you know but you got to consider there's there's very very nasty downfalls in a common law situation a lot of people are pro common law pro common law i don't need some ritualistic ceremony but the point of the matter is if somebody's in a, uh, i heard of one horror story where uh, a couple were in a common law relationship for a number of years and on a bender, uh, the guy ended up getting married to somebody in Las Vegas uh, legally. And um, the the common law spouse was just out in the dark. Nothing they could do because they could try and argue uh, all they want. Uh, but there was nothing uh, to hang their hat on uh, because uh, it didn't hold uh, a candle to the uh, uh, lawful ceremony. And... Um, yeah, you know, so so it is especially appropriate to invest time in maturing, nurturing the love between husband and wife in the first year of marriage. And so love is the key uh, about the bond between. And I like how he starts off saying it's uh, one of the highest expressions of both human and divine morality. Definitely. That's big. Yeah, that's. In, in Rabbi Weiner's book, his second and his third points on this topic are actually reflexive. For example, his second point, a man should marry a woman. His third point, a woman as well, should endeavor to marry a man. And in his citations, he goes, um, he brings Noda Be Yehuda Eben HaEzer, chapter 6, that based on the Ramban, a man who is unable to father children is not obligated in this aspect of making the world settled, but he still should endeavor to marry a woman. So it goes to show that piggybacking off of what you're saying is that love and marriage are, you know, central and very important in the basis of morality, right? So, yeah, but uh, uh, Rabbi Shirky, if you get into the purity laws and the illicit relationships and the definitions, he really draws hard on, uh, the Mishnah Torah, uh, uh, the laws of Kings 9.5, uh, where the Rambam talks about what is permissible. Uh, he, Rabbi Shirky clarifies that no hide man is prohibited from having relations with any of the following and receives punishment uh, for doing so. Um, and then he lists uh, six. And so, um, 
you know, uh, you can't, yeah, no illicit relations with a married woman. And this is why the question of divorce has to be clear and uh, clarified. Uh, you can't have illicit relations with a married woman. Um, and it, it lists a male and it lists animals. I mean, these are, you know, uh, perverse uh, 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 things. Uh, but he describes proper conduct before he gets into uh, the purity laws. Um, and he mentions divorce. Um, if heaven forbid the marriage bond does not turn out well, it happens. I mean, you know, sometimes people yeah. insert drama that doesn't need exactly. to be there, but it, is. it can be severed by the decision of one of the couple to separate only one. It doesn't take a mutual agreement to divorce only one. Uh, in other words, you can never restrain somebody from their free will. Um, it is desirable, though, to in that situation to arrange the separation of the man and the woman officially in front of uh, representatives of the community. Uh, their decision to separate will be inscribed upon a mutually agreed document, and the husband will declare in the presence of witnesses, uh, you are hereby divorced from me and are permitted to any man. Uh, or the woman will declare, I am hereby no longer under your authority and am permitted to any man. Um the, the the reason uh, heaven forbid it ever have to happen but the 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 the, the divorce is to you know cut the string uh rather than keep this game playing push pull uh, uh a head game uh continuing over and over and over um i think you know if if one truly gets the concept of love uh, you know, there's, there's, there, the bond should be, you know, established, uh, based upon, uh, you know, mutually agreed upon, uh, uprightness and, uh, uh, honoring, uh, each other, you know, and helping each other, uh, grow. Remember, it's gotta be two, two parts of one whole. And yeah, I've seen sure. it uh, so often, uh, Steve, people overstep their roles and their boundaries. Um, I've seen, you know, uh, some women, they just have a knack for controlling and try to, you know, use sex or whatever it is to try to control a scenario. Uh, and men can't stand that. But then men, I've seen overstep the boundaries and get too aggressive to to uh, uh, controlling or, you know, you can't, you know, love doesn't. Uh, um, connect with somebody or, on on an incorrect uh, playing field, and um, you know you can't marry somebody to live for their sake. Um, you have to still be a human being, and and not be a doormat. You've got to be uh, uh, somebody who keeps their self esteem healthy, and uh, uh, spouse will always try to. Uh, uh, increase that and uh both should be trying to uh um help each other uh, achieve their full potential in life and uh um i think this is where that question appropriation comes in sometimes that's you know the only uh point for some people is is uh you know, all they're ever going to achieve in this world is procreate, and uh, that's their potential. Um, plays a big part for a lot of people, and uh, um, raising a family is is key uh, to having a, 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 a civil society and um, uh, sharing the ethics that are are, are dear and important. Uh, and it's got to be established on honor and integrity and and truth and uh um yeah those things so make sure that uh, you're on the same uh, playing field or same uh, wavelength and uh understand the roles for sure um because if you don't i mean you've got a, any advice to men you've got to let the women uh nest in the house let them rule in the house uh man's right. got to you know oversee the family in a society in in um and uh you know have direction uh and and, and give guidance but you've got to let the woman be a woman and uh, uh let her have her space i've seen too many guys get uh, heavy-handed and think they rule the house and they're the king of the castle and and nothing is is rubs a woman more the wrong way and mm -hmm. uh realistically you know you've got to be um 
you got to be uh, uh, willing to grow. And uh, sometimes, you know, iron sharpens iron. And uh, uh, sure. uh, if one's truly caring about their spouse, I mean, sometimes they're challenging them to be all they can be. And that's not what we want to hear when we want to just wind down. But, uh, um, you know, behind every great man is a, is a greater woman for sure. And, uh, yeah, sorry, Steve, I'm babbling. No, you're okay. Go on, my- <laughs> No, you're good. But to to um, further expound on the topic of divorce, a rabbi Weiner brings here, he says, in any Gentile marriage, if the two partners wish to separate, they may divorce at any time that either so desires. As you said, it only takes one. When the man sends the woman away from his house with the intention that she should not return to him, or if she leaves of her own accord with the intention not to return, they're separated. And she is now convi- and she is now considered divorced and single and is not married anymore in the judgment of Torah law. But within the Noahide code, there is no need for Gentiles to have a divorce document. Nevertheless, it is preferable in society if there is a formal civil procedure for divorce in this society, such as a legal document or a court record. So. That- oh, for sure. Uh, Rabbi Rabbi Shirky actually throws in this. He says also. It, it is appropriate that the marriage document will include an official commitment on the part of the husband uh, to look after the welfare and comfort uh, of his wife. Uh, that's considered proper conduct in marriage. Um, so rather than call it uh, um, law, he calls it, you know, proper conduct. Uh, in other words, it may not be uh expressly uh commanded but the reality is this is what is more appropriate uh than inappropriate and um uh, i've seen that taken advantage of uh, my my first wife was uh, a gambler and you know the sad thing is you know she figured all my money could go to the casino and uh you know everything i worked for would just go in one hand and out the other and uh nothing infuriated inevitably it caused the breakup but the point being, uh, you know, the lifestyle brings dishonesty and whatever. But the more I work, the more she'd spend. And the more I, uh, successful I got, the more she'd spend. And, you know, and it just it's like when a relationship's one sided like that, you know, you're feeding a bottomless pit. It's, it, you know, it's 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 one sided. It's not a relationship in that case. You know, you need to cut the string because you can't fill a bottomless pit with a shovel. You know, you, you try to shovel dirt, you can even dump back hose worth of dirt in it. It's not going to fill. It's a bottomless pit. So uh, heaven forbid that ever have to happen to anybody. But divorces, uh, you know, do happen. But remarrying, um, you know, is a, you got to look at it as a gift from Hashem for sure. Right, right. It, and don't here's be... A, don't, here's a, tunnel vision on it uh, where it just plagues your life that's that that's all you want and you got to have in other words it's yeah, something yeah. that's got to flow naturally freely um Definitely. and Someone honestly who comes and yeah helps you grow you know when we have to be comfortable i really i truly believe we have to be happy with ourselves before we could ever even dream of any good another to person. Yeah. yeah yeah for sure exactly so um you got to look at it. Is divorce necessarily like ideal? You know, try to make it work. Oh, but, I mean, yeah. The reality yeah, is right. that some people just aren't compatible, and you don't, you aren't obligated to go through this life miserable. <laughs> you know, so find someone that is going to build you up and help you grow. Let, and you yeah, help let's them be grow. clear. We're not encouraging divorce. Uh, right. We're not encouraging it. Yeah. If there's any way humanly possible to work through it, work it out, grow yourself first and foremost. Don't try to change the other. Don't try to demand they need to do this. Look at what you can do to make the situation better. I think a lot of times the trials of life that come our way are to help us grow. And uh, we need to uh, uh, see that divorce is a cop out in the sense of, you know, it's a cutting a string and it is. It is so gut wrenching and uh, uh, life churning, and I have, uh, you know, especially if you get stuck with alimony and child support. I mean, I had to pay both, and and you know, you do it for a number of years, and you get, uh, you know, it just it, it starts to crush pressure on a man in a different light, and needless, uh, you know, 
um, you know, that some people think they're entitled and uh, somebody else has to pay. I mean, uh, oh, it's sad, but, um, you know, what's honorable in the, in the whole of the matter? And, um, you know, even before divorce uh, judges, I mean, family court, they look at it uh, in light of um, they don't want to hear the drama. He did. She did uh, this, 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 the, you know, the, the, you know, what's the assets? What's fair? Um, you know, so often today, you know, guys are once bitten, twice shy. I mean, all they see is a woman is somebody who screams half. I want half. Yeah. <laughs> Everything Free you work for all your life. Half. <laughs> I want yeah. half. You know, and uh, yeah, sadly, uh, while we're on the topic of uh, sticky subjects, um, here's here's another another point that could be valuable in this regard. Uh, it says if a a woman who is forced against her consent to live with a man is not considered married, and if another yeah. if another man cohabits with her, both are exempt from liability. It appears that even if a woman married by her consent and then wants to separate from the man, but he is forcing her to stay with him and not letting her leave, then she is not considered fully married. Thus, if another man cohabits with her in this situation, neither of them are liable for the sin of adultery. Ah, uh, that's definitely so gray of an area, but I mean, uh, yeah. uh, it's not <laughs> gray if somebody's oppressing somebody. I mean, that's definitely not a, a marriage. I mean, before Hashem, love has to be at the at the the forefront and the core. Uh, and exactly. marriage is meant to be, uh, you know, that that uh, uh, ultimate expression of divine morality, as as uh, Rabbi Shirky uh, stated. Uh, um, yep. And he, yeah. So, yeah. Citing the Rambam. Um, uh, Milchamot Sanhedrin, chapter 8, uh, he's bringing that forced marriage is not considered binding. So this deals with the laws of kidnapping. So certainly yeah. gray area, certainly not extremely black and white, but if if you are in an oppressive situation and... Well, I think, I like, think we need to be clear. I think a lot of that forced marriage it, it comes from uh, the Middle Eastern, Eastern uh, yes. family arranged exactly. marriages. Uh, rather than what we see here. That arranged, um, the arrangement she actually goes into next and says it's not proper and in fact it's contemptible that the head of the household, a.k.a. the father, decides with no with no input who his daughter has to marry. Um, he actually elaborates on that, that that's improper, it's contemptible, that the daughter wouldn't have any say in who she marries. So... Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, we, we talked enough about our spiritual abuse series. Uh, uh, you see that a lot where a lot of Christian ministers just refuse to marry or want to break up couples or or some ministers right. think that, they, yeah, they've, they've got to play matchmaker and uh, uh, the people they're sticking together got to be all grateful that, that, they, that, that they assisted rather than see it for what it is, is it's controlling puppet strings. Uh, putting <laughs> yeah. characters together that benefit them in their role uh, rather than uh, uh, your overall happiness. I mean, uh, I've, you know, been victim to that and seen, you know, ministers just stick their hands in and, and break up uh, potential uh, budding uh, 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 friendships, you know, that might go in that direction. And, um, you know, I... And worse, you see it in some cultic type practices where, uh, you know, they literally use, you know, young, attractive women on the forefront of their their evangelical uh, uh, endeavors, you know, to try to draw in people. And uh, it's sad. And that's almost like uh, ancient uh, uh, paganistic uh, prostitution. And uh, uh, Rabbi Shirky in this chapter does make a. Uh, a comment how uh, I think it was this where does he put it under under proper conduct he makes a comment that uh, the court of Shem the son of Noah had actually issued a ban on prostitution and uh, I think that that 
prostitution would include any forced marriage, you know, like, I mean, for a father to f- push their daughter in, uh, into a, into a marriage is almost right. like, you know, are sold for a dowry. I mean, that's like prostitution in that regard, but you know, there are a lot of old practices in, in, in other cultures that, uh, you know, we don't want to, we don't care if we step on people's toes. We're talking about what is moral here and uh, what right, is moral right. is to not, not force somebody against yeah, their will. Exactly. Um, because we, and in our spiritual the, abuse some series. Of points here, some yeah, of the other more, points here are, are very much, for example, he touches on polygamy or um, the status of a concubine, you know. These things in Torah law are legitimate, but he also then expounds, but if the Gentile courts decide to forbid these things, then you have to go with that because we as non-Jews have the obligation to set up courts of justice. So we can't go into a court of law and say, oh, well, the Torah says I can have three wives, but our court of justice says, no, you can't. You know, that's not yeah, a, it's yeah. not legitimate. So, Right. It's all about making society healthier and more wholesome and uh, more realistic and more uh, uh, healthy for living down the road. And uh, I think uh, that's what the, the, the prohibitions uh, really, really deal with. I mean, but if you're talking about marriage and divorce, I mean, the whole point being uh, the bond of love, the bond of connection, the bond of a healthy family and um, uh, how that uh, grows in this world. Um, let's face it, there's a million scenarios with backstory that we don't want to get into that, uh, exactly. you know, somebody's gone through, well, he did this and she did that. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, I've seen some, some people be totally embarrassed by their spouse and uh, still fight through it and, and uh, live a happy long marriage. And um, yet I've also seen people fa- feign a, a happy marriage. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's sad. Um, but, um, you know, it's got to have uh, something concrete. Uh, you've got to be two halves of a single whole and you need to yeah, work together to define what that single whole is. I mean, I mean, I'm happy. My my wife is such a lady of integrity. Really ca- forces me to, you know, keep my game uh, high. You know, and uh, you know, I just love that about her. I mean, so you know, it's it's um, it's exciting. Uh, and sometimes it's challenging, and sometimes it's a little much. And you know, living different would be easier, but uh, you know, easier isn't always healthier. That's for sure. Uh, right. Sometimes Definitely. living too easy is is the most unhealthy unhealthy oh, sure. thing. Challenge in life, definitely. Yeah, it spreads confusion, and um, uh, yeah, so whole wholesome living uh, has got you know what to be said. Yeah. And another another topic would be in modern conventional speech, a hookup, right? Mm-hmm. Um, if we're discussing marriage, divorce, remarriage, clearly in between those stages, I'm sure the topic of a random encounter could come up, you know, so we might as well just cover all our bases here. Um, so if a Gentile cohabits with an unmarried woman without the intention of marriage, whether or not the matter is known publicly, it does not render her married to him or give her a status of mayorasa. And it is mere licentiousness. Although such relations are not clearly forbidden for Gentiles, it is in fact a repulsive act, even if done in a temporary fashion. So, yeah, it's not proper conduct at all. I mean, uh, I think Rabbi Shirky talks a bit about proper conduct. Uh, he says a, a man must refrain from spending time alone with someone else's wife in a closed room or in an an area into which other people are not likely to enter. In other words, in other words, it's just, yeah, like the laws of you should. Uh, yeah. And then he gets into proper conduct is about wearing modest attire that uh, preserves a person's honor, uh, particularly where women are concerned and especially married women uh, is an elevated character trait. 
Therefore, it is um, also appropriate to refrain from wearing clothes classically associated with the opposite sex. Um, yeah. And he says it is appropriate that the marriage dog. Yeah, I mentioned that third point. Uh, but proper conduct, you know, uh, is, you know, you got to really look at it as elevated character traits. Um, yep. If you want to be a person of integrity, a person of character, somebody that attracts the right person, uh, you've got to you've got to show those elevated characteristics yourself and integrate them into your life. And um, you'll draw somebody of high caliber. Uh uh, you know, it doesn't take a lot of effort to draw somebody of low caliber um, and low caliber. Uh, yeah, it, it just brings a whole heap of problems. And um, uh, right. yeah, it is what it is. So consider proper conduct in, 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 in integrity and the caliber of your, your own character uh, and uh, who you would even contemplate uh, a marriage with. I mean, if it's not on the forefront of your mind uh, and you're just looking for an object, you're missing the whole point of marriage. Uh, That's and therefore, I mean, with with the Noahide Code and the Sheva Mitzvahs being really so logical and ethical, you know, if it feels wrong, it's probably wrong. You know what I mean? So... <laughs> That's a very big oversimplification, but does that make sense? You know, if oh, it's spot if it's, on. If it's yeah, going to get you in that position, it's probably wrong. You know, so. That's that's yeah yeah I heard I heard I think it was uh, Rabbi Friedman the, the the other day where he talked about three specific points where people err and 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 um, one was rationalization they start to over rationalize it in their mind. Uh, two mm -hmm. was an act of the will, you know, it's just an act of the will. They do something incorrect or, or, or three, just plain, uh, pleasure. And, um, you know, uh, they do something for uh, those three, you're going down the wrong path for sure. So if you're over rationalizing it, that's the first sign that you're, you're in the, you're, 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 you're playing with fire and going down the wrong path. You know, uh, if you, you're just making a, you know, bad decision, uh, you, you know, it's something you want. You got to own up to it and and repent of that and uh, get on with life. Um, yeah, either that or you're pursuing pleasure, um, which you know has some strengths and weaknesses. But the point is, it's it's uh, at the bottom, uh, it's nonsense. You got to understand where the bottom line of nonsense. Uh, versus a relationship to Almighty God with Almighty God, uh, you know, the, the marriage is is harmonious with the relationship to Almighty God, and we've got to consider, um, you know, certain things, you know, are greater than us, and you can't uh, uh, toy around in a relationship uh, that you care about. And uh, uh, a lot of times the, the difficulties we go through in life are because of our own uh, incorrect uh, rationalizations, acts of our will, and uh, chase and desires. And if you miss that point, it's, you know, you've got to learn to, to uh, overcome those steps so that you're not getting buffeted about by uh, uh, the repercussions of... Uh, uh, um, you know, terrible acts. I mean, so, so, you know, uh, you understand virtue and vice and, uh, uh rewards and repercussions. I mean, uh, there's repercussions for being impure and, uh, it's Hashem communicating, Hey, Hey, that's not good for you. Don't do that. You know, don't touch that right. hot stove. You'll get burned. <laughs> and, uh, and, yeah, uh, you know, right. a lot of times they're warning signs. You're going to get hurt. And uh, it's not healthy for you to go down that path. And so, um, yeah, decipher, uh, don't over-rationalize uh, and justify going down a wrong path. And um, if it generally seems uh, to your initial gut instincts taboo, stay away. Uh, and mm -hmm. do it because you love Hashem, right? You, 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 you want to uh like a flame to the source you want to be drawn to the uh to the source meaning hashem and um 
if you're uh, uh, making good decisions because you you love Hashem, uh, this is what makes uh, the Noahide Code mitzvot, is you're doing it for the right reasons, and this is that connective interface with Hashem in honest relationship, and you'll find that honesty in your relationship with Hashem brings that uh, blessing uh, that mazal from above and 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 uh, makes your path uh, uh, wholesome and 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 uh, your sphere of influence in your community starts to grow and develop and um, you know you, true blessing in life happens and, and and potential gets achieved and you can be a complete person uh, uh, two halves of a one whole have a better shot at being a complete person than one half on its own. And, uh, right. you know, you and I sure know enough people that have been single or single for a long time and or gone through breakups and situations and, and they're in agony or just, you know, loneliness and it's not a fun place to be in. Um, but you need to understand that uh, a marriage is a, a gift from Hashem. A spouse is a gift from Hashem in some respects. Hashem rules all and is 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 God over over everything. And um, you know that right person for you does exist. But um, you know you can't just settle for you know a piece of meat and thinking that you know another person is, you know is is going to be your salvation that's you know uh, twisted form of idolatry and you know marriage is not intended to be idolatrous and uh you know and don't let your sex drive you know rule uh in your heart you right. should be convicted of that and, and pursue honor honor honorable uh things yeah definitely well all right dan i think that uh i think that about <laughs> covers oh yeah we could go on and on and on i'm sure if questions were brought up and right, but the right. point being uh you know marriage is one of those things that should be so honorable and so uh, like that divine morality uh human and divine morality it's the apex and uh, that relationship right. with, with hashem doesn't doesn't uh, enjoy divorce at all um you don't want to uh, ever be divorced from Hashem and uh, uh, the gut-wrenching uh, uh, nature of it. When one person threatens it on another and a person who's maybe based their whole life on somebody else, I mean, that sense of loss is is just, it's so tearing. Uh, uh, but, but what it does to children, if there's children involved, is is just terrible. And I've seen children used as as tools, you know, and, and, and the statistics yeah. are terrible. I think, you know, one of the last statistics I heard is that, um, two years after a divorce, uh, there's about, uh, 40% of men do not see their children two years after divorce. And, um, it's about 65% of men do not see their children five years after divorce. Um, especially even if they're young children. They just aren't involved. And a lot of times it's because, you know, their ex has moved on, you know, got hooked up with somebody else who doesn't want the ex around. And uh, it just causes mayhem. And a lot of times there's drama that gets involved. But that is so hard on the children, right? They long for the 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 the, the wholesome nature of a, a safe house and an, the integrity of a wholesome home. And... Um, it's almost like they know how it should be, uh, but you know the, the the I find too often divorces happen because people want to be right rather than together, and they miss the <laughs> whole point. They'd rather be right than yeah. together, and the other person's wrong, yep. and uh, they end up breaking up over an, uh, an issue that they've made an issue that ten years from then they'll say, I don't believe I made that an issue, you know, and. Uh, if they're honest with themselves and uh it, sadly um it's gut-wrenching on 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 anybody that's ever gone through uh it and uh, we don't wish the, the aftermath or followed on anybody especially uh, on the children is so if you are capable uh, or have any character or integrity um 
you know, be bold and work through it, right? Um, yeah. You know, yeah. uh, grab a hold of the the, 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 the hemp of being willing to power through. Yeah, it. yeah, and, and, and patch patch up the indifferences and 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 uh, uh, lay the line down and say this is what I can live with and this is what I cannot live with and be clear in your communication. Uh, and your desires and uh, with your spouse and uh, or your potential spouse and be honest and uh, be a person of character yourself. Don't ever uh, expect something of your, your spouse you wouldn't uh, do yourself and don't don't ever uh, objectify uh, your spouse or, you know, it's just not the right thing to do. And, um, you know, be clear and kind and uh, caring and... Um, you know, grateful and uh, who knows, could be somebody you're with for 50, 60, 70 years, Hashem willing. You never know. And uh, um, this is how a spouse can be a gift from Hashem. And so, yeah, we'll leave it at that because, I mean, yeah, we don't want to get into the minutia of what could or couldn't be or should or shouldn't be. Um, if anybody's got any comments or questions or want to see us talk about a specific topic, uh, please write it down in the chat and uh, Steve and I'll argue or hash it out. Uh, it was his idea to do this topic and he said he'd look at the Divine Codes concept on it and I, I'd go over uh, the Noah Hyde or World Center's Brit Shalom book, which is one mm -hmm. chapter on the family and uh, if one truly understands ethics in general and what's um, what's honest and ethical uh, and upright, um, you know, you've got a good footing, uh, but uh, you've got to be mature enough to be married for sure, because sometimes it's not all you think it's going to be. And uh, uh, your, your, your starry eyed uh, 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 bride, uh, when you're young, uh, you know, uh, they get older, they wait on and uh, you know it's life right you got to be realistic and uh, we all age I get bags yeah I mean my hair's gone gray I mean you know life is life right it just keeps ticking forward and uh, but what's real what's real I mean is that bond of love real and are you loving to your spouse you've got to ask yourself that every day and um, you know hope that they're loving back and uh, um, but it's not something you can you know force it's not like a you know a can you can open with an opener right it just doesn't work that way and um, people are people and uh, uh, helping them fulfill their potential uh, is the best way to see them uh, uh, um, you know uh, shine and beam with uh, legitimate love and uh, you know, marriage bond, you know, is I, I like the way Rabbi Shirky says that it's the highest form of human and divine morality. And uh, I think that the love of Hashem for the nation of Israel is is in preserving them and returning them to their nation is, is you know, it's there because, you know, Hashem's never uh, left them, though they've spent 2000 years in exile um I just hope that the, the the nation of Israel, the Hebrew people, learn to shed that uh, 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 gullus mentality, that exile mentality, that uh, um, you know, that's that's an idea that you know Hashem is not with them. In reality, mm -hmm. is you know, uh, he's so with them. There. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He rules everything. So, yeah. Well, hey, I'm my friend. <laughs> Yes, sir. All right, buddy. I got to go cook for my wife. I'm cooking dinner tonight, making homemade uh, pizza from scratch. Uh, the dough's been rising while nice. we're doing this, and so nice. I got to go roll her out and uh, make it happen, man. Awesome. Well, all right, everybody. Dan all Barwell, right, Noah Thanks. High Center. Check their content out. Content out. Uh, and this was the Exodus Project. We'll see you next time.